What? You're distracting me. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess you haven't heard. Bird is the word? Yes, but no, not that. Did you fucking know that he did it again? That there are more 1313 movies? Yeah, I know. What do you mean you know? I mean, I know. I've known for quite some time. We've been prepping this since, I don't know, before October at the latest. Hell, last episode we clearly pointed out at the ending that we were going to be doing this. There's a link right there that you could click to see it. Hell, we just finished watching the movie five minutes ago and we are about to go review it. So let me ask you, how do you think I didn't know that we were doing 1313 again? What the hell are you doing? Don't you fucking look at me! Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be on the couch, you, uh, you sort out. Yeah. the movie today. 1313 13 Boy Crazies. Boy Crazies. 1313 13's back. Mm. All right. So, uh, so, for anyone who doesn't know, we've done 10 of the 1313 13, 13 movies uh, before. And now this is number 11. If you haven't seen it, a card, maybe. I don't know. You ever have stitches and you ever accidentally rip those stitches open? Ooh. <sighs> That's this movie. All right, well, let's get into the plot. There is it's been so long. It's yeah. like ripping scars it open. Is. All right, so the plot of this movie is very simplistic. Uh, there is a sleek Malibu mansion that is known as a modeling house. May or may not exist. I don't know. <laughs> We've seen the inside of it. Yeah. We know the... We can probably draw you a floor plan. Uh, and this uh, this house, uh, there is a boy named Trent who's moving into it. And when he gets there, he's met by three very uh, unnerving male gentlemen and uh, one... Posh yuppies. One, uh, one female named Sheila. And... As it turns out, Sheila and her three merry men are vampires. Mm. And they turn Trent into a vampire like them. But Trent, Trent does not feel the same way that they do. They, they oh yeah, the, the, when you turn into a vampire you get eternal life and some powers that aren't very well explained and seduction abilities. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe electricity? And uh, your photos have the ability of luring yeah. people. Uh, but, um... <laughs> with tiger growls. But they, uh, they end up being on two separate sides of the moral thing of whether or not it's okay to kill innocents for their feeding and eternal life and blah blah blah. Um, in the end, Trent ends up killing a lot of them. Ooh. And then it's implied that the house and the vampires aren't Really gone? Somehow? Interspice a whole lot of walking around this mansion in their underwear and, uh, and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Licking lips? Anyway, so, uh, get into the acting. Two shower scenes. Uh, <laughs> Alright, all the people who are very familiar with, uh, our series will know our acquaintance with uh, David Dakota's work uh, in the 1313 series most specifically but at the same time we have also reviewed other uh, movies of his like the two Puppet Master films uh, Talking Pony Talking Pony, Talking Cat uh, I think that's a maybe another one anyway. uh, either way um, uh, and people have lampooned his series forever his acting in this movie I I really hope that these actors got paid for this job <laughs> because uh, there's so little... I, I mean, it's almost impossible to talk about the acting without talking about the tech at the same time. 
uh, because the fact of the matter is, though, so much of this movie is just repeated shots. So we really can't give 100% an honest critique of the acting because so little of it actually happens. Knock him dead was also one. Knock him dead. Knock I forgot dead. about that one. That was probably the most competently acted. Yeah. Uh, and it's because, uh, I believe it was because there's a whole bunch of, like, screen queens and stuff like that in it, but, uh, and also, uh, Sheila in this movie is, uh, very eclectic in, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the screen queen, uh, type of, uh, shtick. She's done in a lot of thrillers and whatnot. Half of her movies that I saw on the list there had even, like, lust or desire in the title. Just her IMDb, like, known for thing is, like, The Pornographer and Tender Flesh. So, if that gives you any sort of idea... Well, the, well, the pornographer, I don't think, was an actual... But you get boring, the idea, yeah. the gist. Yeah, of what she usually is. And, like, and that, I don't have a problem with that, yeah. one way or another. I mean, like you sell for whatever you need to sell. But it's... The, I honestly think that this is one of the few movies uh, that... Uh, he Dakota only had like these actors for like a weekend. Not even. Like uh, and I like and I'm saying like if it's that's like the uh, best case scenario. I doubt that they actually did. I think that they only had Sheila for like an afternoon or some shit. It was like you know, they had like all right, we have like um, we have like three hundred bucks. We can pay <laughs> her for like you know four hours or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, for me, the the acting. Like you said, it's so many repeated shots, and it's just so much walking, where you literally... I mean, don't get me wrong, there's good walking and there's bad walking in the way of acting, but uh, there's so little to go off of, it's impossible to say whether or not these people are good actors. I will say that there are a bunch of lines in there that, who boy, was that a first take? Cause mm, there was one scene, yeah. one scene where a lot uh, from Sheila, a guy, a guy is uh, entranced and seduced, and he comes back to the house, and Trent's waiting outside to stop him. He's like, "No, they're gonna kill you! Get out of here! Don't you understand? I'm gonna kill you!" Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> uh, maybe. I mean, I'm feeling a little bit of emotion in your voice, but it's definitely not urgency. That's not the one we're hearing here. No. Nah. So, uh, but no. I, Overall, the the acting ability, it's what I if I'm remembering correctly. Because I've the, seen wooden characters. I've also seen wood. <laughs> watch that, John. Um, Seriously. The, <laughs> the, the 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 acting in this movie is so hard to define as to whether or not it is good, just by the actors' abilities. The acting isn't good by the script. It isn't good by the editing. It isn't good by the tech. It isn't good by any other so standard. So it isn't good. I, but I feel like if there was a really good performance, it could shine through all of that. It could manage to make its way through either way. But mm, there wasn't that. It didn't have that this time. The See, James Cameron is known for saying, uh, at least I believe this is James Cameron, uh, that uh, you, know, you can hide a lot of bad directing with good acting. Yeah. Uh, this is not that. No, not at all. Uh, yeah, it's, it's overall, it's just a mess of a, mess of a film. Mess of a movie. I don't, like, what more is there really to say? Honest to God. I mean, not about the acting, really, because nah. the fact of the matter is, a lot of this is very standard, uh, Dakota fare. A lot of, like, sleeping in the same bed, uh, a lot of rubbing. Always in uh, their underwear. A couple shower scenes and whatnot, uh, that one of them I, I think was... Either done in the nude, or it was just like they had it like very, very cropped out. Very low. Uh, but either way, I mean, like uh, we've gotten a bunch of uh, of uh, I want to bring this up right now. It's like we we've gotten a bunch of comments before uh, on Dakota movies saying that we're not the obvious demographic for yeah. this the, these types of films. But the fact of the matter is, though, and I said to this uh, to David very early in our watching of this movie is that even if it was women, I would think this movie was was. Yeah, you stupid. Said, you said like, that when there was a slow motion walking scene of the three vampires, and they which is repeated like just two more over times, over and over again, just walking down. And I, as soon as you said that line, I tried envisioning them as just like scantily clad women doing that same walk, and it was just as stupid, just as stupid. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Like you know, and you know my my rule here and whatnot is like you know don't have content up the smut. But the fact of the matter is, though, like, this is such... I don't even know how these movies get to be rated, like, R and shit like that, because, like, this, these movies are, like, so PG-13 oh, yeah. in the way that they up the smut. Now, at the same time, though, like, 
I can't say much because Dakota obviously has a market for these movies because, you know, beside the fact that he comes out with like 10 a year, uh, it's just like at the same time, every single time I see them on sites like Amazon, like Netflix, all that kind of stuff, they all have ratings on them and, com and, and comments and reviews and stuff like that. So, like, there are people who have watched these movies enough to which that they actually care enough to say their points of view on that. Which is what Obviously we're, what doing. we're doing. Yes. <laughs> it's like, uh, hence. Yeah. But at the same time, though, it's just like, and their boggles of imagination, I guess it just goes right into the script. Uh, yeah. It's just the fact that there really wasn't much of one. Yeah. Uh, there were little tiny scenes of dialogue that's, punctuated between the scene going blue. That's, okay, so what, what I've. I can give the plot, but I he's can... He's used for dreams, he's used for night shots. What do your blue scenes mean, I can David? give the plot in regards to, like, what happens in a series of events, but I can't give... I can't express to you how often this thing cuts away from that plot to do nothing. Like, in the middle of actually, like, well, if there's one oh scene that God. it builds up to the point at which the action actually is about to take place, and then it cuts so, away to that scene, to a different, like... Yeah, it, it cuts, it's an entire action scene where his friend, his friend that he had before he moved into this house, was lured into this house to be food. And he tries to get him out. He's like, hey, you need to leave now. You don't understand what's going on. Sheila comes up and is like, what are you doing? Are you going to cost us our, our meal? And he's like, yes, and I'm going to stop you. And he tries to stop her, but then she just, like, essentially grabs him by the neck, holds him up against the wall, and then Chris, with a K, uh, is the name of the friend. What's he, going on, What are you doing? And then she's like, you stay right where you are. And then from there... Fade to black. Fade to black. Come Blue. Back. He's just in bed, and they're already attacking Chris. It's like... Something happened there. And somehow he got to a point where he got outside to where the pool was. Then he was <laughs> chased inside again and then feasted on up in the second floor, oh even God. though it was on the second floor to begin with. It was fucking like, ridiculous. All right. well, we, we, we were also saying that there was a good possibility. Like, obviously we don't know. I would love, again, like, this is a call out to David Dakota if you actually find this. Mm -hmm. uh, we we had a director uh, contact us recently that I still have to get back to, but at the same time, it was uh, uh, of a movie that we had just watched. So I know that some of you guys actually watch these reviews. So, uh, David Dakota, please reach out. We would love to interview you. Uh, we have no animosity towards you, but we are just dumbfounded by your movies, sir. Is anyone else thirsty? Uh, it's it's like, thirsty. So I'm just, uh, it's just, it, <laughs> it's just, it's. It's, it's, I want to actually know your reasons behind some of these decisions. Like, and, I, and if it ends up being just like, I don't give a fuck, I just do it because I do it. I don't care, that will be a great reason. I, I, I want to see if it's sort of, if you have, not to the evil, evil extent that he has. It's like what John of, Waters did. Well, I'm sort of thinking the Uva Bowl way, of he's found like a tax loophole or something. See, I don't think it would be this one because I can't imagine these movies costing a hell of a lot of money to produce. There's still 13 of them. In such a short period of time. All you have to do is hire somebody who's willing to work for lunch. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> like, like, majority of the people who are in these movies are not in anything else. Well, that's, uh, what was it? During, thir no, uh, Talking Pony. Yeah. They had Wes from the Power Rangers. Yeah. And we were like, wow, what's he doing there? And we looked up, and he had worked with Dakota, like, really early on in his career. So I feel like most of the... Screen a lot of favors. Most of the screen queens, everything is all favors, and then most of the young boys are just, you know. I think they're all models. Yeah, models, sl actor slash model. Um, no, just models. Just models. Well, no, it's like, um, and, and it was funny too because I recently watched the movie The Neon Demon. Mm -hmm. uh, sat around like what, like contemplating it for like in like uh, a full week. Uh, which is funny because then every single one of these movies always have to do with somebody in the modeling agency or the acting agency uh, or whatever the fuck that happens to be. It's like, like the, the movie itself didn't even go like five seconds in the very beginning oh, without wow. a guy showing up without a shirt on. I'm just like... It's open with it. And regardless of... Like, and again, like, I, I want to just stress the point that regardless of uh. what our personal feelings one way or another about the content are, regardless of who is doing these... Uh, these scenes, whether it be female, transgender, or what the fuck ever, it would still just be as corny as and, and as bad. If the movie opened up with two girls in whatever house, and then one of them walks in and just like a bra and panties, and just like, oh, help me do the laundry, we'd be like, this is so fucking 
It's like, what? Now, well, no, if, if it was like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, hey, if they brought up to the point, I was like, hey, why are you, like, not dressed? Like, yeah. Oh, I'm doing laundry. That would have been okay. Yeah. But if, this guy is just no, just there. He's just in his bed and on oh my, computer. And oh my god, the amount of yeah. fucking uh, hot tub shots. No, no, no. The, there uh, was there like, were three. There was barely four. even. Sorry, there was four. There was three close-ups and a long shot uh, that also... Pushed in and out, uh, and the funny thing is, though, if you look at the scenes when the the cameras are pulling out, and then the next shot, the camera is pushing in, and the bubbles are going in reverse. Oh my god! Uh, it's just it. it, it they were. I, they, that's okay. I don't understand why the feels that. that he needs to stretch these movies out to be a feature length. Let me get into that. So the technical stuff. I I. When it comes to footage, we've said this before. There is maybe, maybe half an hour of footage here. I, I, I have, hesitate to even give it that much. And if you cut out all the blue parts entirely, the parts that don't further the plot at all and are just character development, if even, then there isn't half an hour of footage. Almost certainly. I wouldn't think more than a half hour. And it's it's so weird because he just he walks out of the bedroom. He just goes. Walks out of the bedroom. Walks up the balcony. Walks to the other side of the balcony. Even goes if you up don't the stairs, know the layout of this house. Down, goes into another room. Goes down the stairs. Goes into the kitchen. Goes out of the kitchen. No, even if you don't know room, the layout of this house, room, you would know for the fact matter. Goes is. back in the bedroom. <laughs> That's the whole track. I know. And they do it like four times. The thing is, even if you don't understand the layout of this house, the fact of the matter is, though, like the walking in this does not make any sense oh in and of itself. God. If it was a dream sequence, like he's had in some of these movies before, yeah. maybe you could get away with it to a certain degree, but these are obviously not that. These are supposed to be like nighttime scenes. Yeah. Which. Why? Why the fuck do you think that making a movie blue would be at all a representation of the fact that it's daytime out? And some of them are even uh, so, e some of them are even neither. equally confusing in the fact that, like, at the very last part of it, when he starts killing off the guys, uh, he there is a part where I'm going to try to remember this as best I can. I'm going to say, boy one, boy one enters into the bedroom where he's currently trapped. Boy 2 then enters the bedroom, Boy 1 nowhere to be seen, and is attacked by Trent and killed. Trent then goes outside and, and, shocks meets, him to death, and meets Boy 1 again in the hot tub, then fade to black, fade back, and now Boy 3 is in the hot tub with no passage of time being shown, and Trent then kills him as well. That is... And then he kills... What?! What? <laughs> he kills Felicia, or whatever the hell the hell her name is. Like, there's a difference in, like, ex trying to expect your audience to think that one location is actually two separate ones when shot from no. different angles. But no. this is not even an attempt at doing that. This is... Final thoughts. Fuck it. I did that at Mafia the True Story. See how well that worked out? <laughs> uh, no, and... Uh, Final I also did that in Macabre, too. Uh, but uh, also did that in Sadali and Matina. Actually, all my early movies before are Stallions. But uh, the, uh, the only thing that I have to really say about the final thoughts is like this is a very stock standard 1313 movie. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty much kind of, I would say, it's, it's, it's much full of filler as like actor slash model. Uh, but at the same time, though, it's not nearly as horrible as the series has gotten before with, like, Cougar Cult. Yeah. Uh, Cougar Cult is the worst one still to me uh, in this series. But overall, the fact of the matter is, though, like, this was a very stock standard movie, and it didn't really push anything in any particular way for me whatsoever. I don't have strong feelings about this. I'm not going to remember it very well. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, this didn't even have anything to do with Phase 4. Yeah, this like, was distributed specifically through Rabbit Heart. Rabbit Heart TV, yeah. and, and uh, which is interesting. I mean, like, I, I don't know. Maybe there's there's a couple Phase Four products out there that started getting good, and that's just how it was. So. <laughs> All right, for me, uh, my final thoughts on this is that yeah, it's just another thirteen thirteen film. I mean, this one it had a, what was it like a four point five on IMDb, which take with a grain of salt because I'm pretty sure it also only has like twenty ratings total. So. I don't know how many of those are the cast and crew, but all in all, this movie was just boring. I mean, there were, we managed to make a few jokes that are like, oh, an expense there. We were just 
cracking jokes or whatever we could think of, but for the most part, this movie was just a bare-bones plot padded out by lots of walking around the sleek Malibu mansion. And it's just to show off the place. Yeah, and they suck it so he, much. He's trying to sell his house. Pretty much. And here's a movie to go along with it. I I honestly don't think that yeah, this movie this movie was not by far the worst one. It didn't use any stupid ass special effects. Ah, the acting was pretty curious. boring. I really want to know how it compares in the amount of blue it used, because it seems like this one used a lot more than the others, but I'm sure we thought that with every movie we saw. True. So, uh, yeah, overall, just a pretty pretty boring movie. So that's uh, 1313 Boy Crazies, and two more to go! Two more! <laughs> I want to do it. I can't, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it, man. I can't do it for another two episodes. What if I told you that there was a way to make it all worthwhile? A way to get powers beyond your wildest dreams. What the fuck was that? What was what? That, that echo on the powers bit. What the fuck was that? Right, right. Yeah, that's that's part of the deal. It'll it'll happen to you too once you get your powers. But I must warn you, there is a great cost involved. You know what? I don't I don't fucking care. I don't I don't care. I don't care. Do it. Let's just do it. Let's do it right now. You should really hear what the cost is, though. No, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit anymore. I don't care what it is. I'm ready to do anything. I'm ready to go. Okay, but everyone that I've ever told the cost to has backed out immediately, so you really should consider listening to... I don't give a fuck, man. I don't care if I have to sign my name away in blood on a contract and sell my soul to the devil and my liver to Kevin Spacey. I don't give a shit. Sell me the Watchtower, Mr. Witness. Sell it to me. Come on. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, you're the first person to ever accept the deal, so um, see how this goes. Uh, close your eyes. Hold out your hand. Other hand. Okay. Um, okay. Um, when you open your eyes, all of your troubles will be made worthwhile, and you will have... Unimaginable power! Don't spend it all in one place. A Taco Bell gift card. Powers. Oh,